to day four of our book club by Brene, of Rising Strong by Brene Brown. I am just loving this book. I don't know if any of you are reading it along with me. Um, I know some of you are, but this book has just been messing with me in such a good way. And um, I missed yesterday because I um, was taking the day off, and um, but I still read, and there was so much good stuff in it. Oh my goodness. Um, good morning, Jillian. Um, I just keep like, I don't know if you can see my book, but like how all the dog-eared pages, and then there are so many pages that I have um, just underlined and all that. Um, what book is next? Well, next week I am launching my own book. Um, Money Making Mom comes out on Tuesday. Um, and so guess what? I am going to give myself the week off from book club because I need to um, be realistic and it's going to be a really busy week. And um, I'm for sure going to be going to Virginia to be on the 700 Club and have a lot of other things going on next week with book launch. So I am going to wait for another, um, at least another week. I might wait two weeks. It kind of depends upon how next week goes. But I will let you know for sure whenever I have it Pick the next book picked out and give you a few days hopefully to um, be able to uh, pick up a copy. So hi Ginger, thanks so much. Um, okay, so this book, oh my goodness, it's just been, oh, it's been so good. Um, I, it's really hard for me to pick which which quote I even want to read and talk about with you. So, but I wanted to share this one. I actually posted this one on um if you can see, isn't that just so beautiful? I love the quotes in this book. But um, I posted this on my Instagram. My Instagram, I'm the money saving mom on um, Instagram. And I posted that. It's integrity is choosing courage over comfort. Choosing what is right over what is fun, fast, or easy. And choosing to practice our values rather than simply professing them. Choosing to practice our values rather than simply professing them. We talked about um, how um, the whole thing about story a few days ago and how we can make up so many stories um, and that if we don't know the truth, we will make up stories and we'll make up stories in our head about what is actually going on in this situation. And I loved this very simple quote. It says, in the absence of data, we will make, we will always make up stories. So make sure that when you are telling um, something in your head, you're telling yourself, you know, that person doesn't like me or that situation is because of this, or I'm sure my husband's thinking this, or I'm sure my coworker is thinking this. Don't make up those stories. Don't make up those stories. Make sure that you fact check and get the right data. So that has really convicted me, but then this quote was so good. She was talking about how so much of the time we don't believe that people are doing their very best. We think that, you know, well, we can be so critical of other people and think, why did they do that? And as I have learned through blogging, one of the things that I have learned is that everyone has a story and everyone has their things that they're struggling with. And we can look at someone else who maybe they said a critical word, they made a critical comment, they did something to us that, you know, I've found that when people will leave a critical comment on my blog, instead of thinking, man, that person is a really nasty person. I can't believe they'd say that. Instead, to challenge myself to think, I wonder, I wonder what they're struggling with in their life right now. I wonder what they're going through. I wonder what would cause them to leave that kind of comment. I wonder what I said that triggered something for them. And then praying for them, praying and saying, you know, what are they what are they going through god can you please just help them and encourage them and what's been interesting is it, when i don't you know fight back and defend myself and um lash out and be snarky or whatever um back the interesting thing is it really impacts people and so many times if you stick with your you know i stick with my policy to never defend myself and to think they must be going through a really hard time. 
and probably this is not about me. This is about some situation in their life and I just triggered that for them. But loving them, when I just love them, instead of lashing out at them, over time, they'll come back to me and they'll say, you know, what what's what what do you have here like or they'll apologize or they will they will be open to hearing things because i didn't lash out but i thought that this was really good so she was talking about how um we we need to look at people and think they were doing the best that they could do and a lot of times it's because they don't know better they don't know better you don't know what it's like to walk in their shoes but that this quote was, this quote kind of doesn't go along with that, but it was just in that section that really challenged me. So compassionate people ask for what they need. They say no when they need to. And when they say yes, they mean it. They're compassionate because their boundaries keep them out of resentment. How often do we say yes to something, not because we want to do it, because, but maybe we feel obligated or maybe we feel bad or whatever, but then we will feel resentment. And why do we feel resentment? Because we shouldn't have said yes in the first place. So compassionate people ask for what they need. They say no when they need to. And when they say yes, they mean it. They're compassionate because their boundaries keep them out of resentment. When I do something because I feel pushed, pressured, guilt-tripped, or shamed into it, I expect people to be appreciative in addition to being respectful and professional. 90% of the time, they are none of the above. How can we expect people to put value on our work when we don't value ourselves enough to set and hold uncomfortable boundaries? So as a business owner, that really challenged me. And another one, we don't judge people when we feel good about ourselves. So making sure you know the truth in your heart and then it helps you. You don't have to judge people or feel like you need to uh, be critical because you know the truth in your heart about who you are. Let me see if I can find Okay, and then one more quote. She was talking about the whole... Um, the, the what I talked about before about how um, believing the best about people and believing that they're trying to do the best that they can do. She said, this doesn't mean that we stop helping people set goals or that we stop expecting people to grow and change. It means that we stop respecting and evaluating people based on what we think they should accomplish and start respecting them for who they are and holding them accountable for what they're actually doing. It means that we stop loving people for who they could be and start loving them for who they are. It means that sometimes when we're beating ourselves up, we need to stop and say to that harassing voice inside, man, I'm doing the very best I can right now. I feel like this paragraph right here about not loving people for who they could be, but loving them for where they are and who they are. I need to stamp that on my forehead because I can have really high expectations of people because I will think, I know that they've got it in them and they can do so much more. They have so much potential. So then I hold them up to that potential that I think that they have instead of thinking, maybe they're really struggling right now with something. Maybe they're going through a really hard thing in their life and, and I am trying to get them to be up here, way up high, when I need to just love them right where they're at because that's what I want for other people. I want other people to love me right where I'm at instead of saying, you need to do more, you need to try harder, you know, that sort of thing. And so that just really challenged me. So that was um, from chapters three through six, because I skipped today, so chapters three through six, and then um, the next few days we're gonna read, um, today it's um, seven and eight, and then tomorrow I'm hoping to try to finish the book, but I am having to take it slowly because there's so much good stuff in it. So anyway, that's what I wanna share today, and I will be back tomorrow after my morning scope to share more from what I'm learning from Brene Brown's book, Rising Strong. So thanks so much for joining